Hello, everyone. Good morning. Happy Thursday. Let me know, guys, if you can hear me, if you want to say hello. Good morning. Good morning, Ali, Eileen, Elizabeth, Lisette. I want to go ahead and jump right in, guys. I want to give you as much time today as possible to look at your sonnets. If you also want to practice reading it, uh, we can do that today. Um, what I've seen so far, your sonnets are really coming together uh, nicely. Uh, I'm getting some emails and you're making some a lot of changes. I want to make sure that uh, I give a preference today to those who I have not yet had a chance to uh, review your sonnet. So um, we'll kind of do it as, as you're coming in. I know Emmanuel had mentioned that he wanted uh, me to look at his. So as soon as he gets in, we'll look at his. Uh, maybe Mike, if you have something today you want to talk about, let me know. Again, I want to give preference to those first today that I have not yet had a chance to uh, review, okay? So that uh, hopefully all of you will get some form of feedback before tomorrow's poetry reading. Tomorrow, I'd, I'd like to use most of the, the live session for all of the poems. Since we're going to have four poems, we're going to read them in order. We're going to start uh, with the limerick, then the sinkane, the tanka, and then the sonnet. We'll go in that order. Um, I'll post the order of who's going to present first. I'll post that in Microsoft Teams so that you're aware of who is going to go first or the order in which we're going to present. But just to make things a little bit easier for editing the final video, I'm going to ask that when we read the poems, we're going to start at the beginning with each type of poem, right? So uh, if after you read the poem, you're not happy with the performance, you want to reread it again, uh, you'll have a chance to do that. Um, but I don't think I'm going to offer rereads at the end, at the very end, like I've done before, just to keep try to keep all of the uh, versions within each of the poems. That just makes it a little bit easier to, to edit. And since we're going to have four poems, uh, it'll uh, it's going to get a little more difficult if we offer opportunities for rereading at the very end. Okay, so again, if you make a mistake, that's fine. You can stop and start over, or you can read the whole poem. And if you're not happy with the performance, you can re you can reread it again. All right, we're going to have the whole class. I think we're going to have enough time if we uh, use most of the class. So probably you know maybe five minutes maybe 10 minutes to 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 get ready and then we're, we're going to jump right into it tomorrow for uh, the final poetry reading okay so again make sure that if you're making edits to other poems that you try to complete that for today and uh, if you want me to look at any of your poems between now and uh, the next class uh, just shoot me an email or not an email but a chat and I would prefer that you send the emails or the chats within, I don't know, this evening so that I get enough time to go through them and give you uh, feedback and you still have enough time uh, to make the changes just so you're not making changes at the very last minute. All righty. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And... I'm taking another look here. So, Gloria, good morning. So, maybe I can look at yours, Gloria and Chris. Again, those of you who I have not yet had a chance to uh, take a look at your your poems, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And let's go to our website. So, remember, guys, again, the rhyming scheme. Uh, I think most of us have a good handle on on what that means. Iambic pentameter, that's going to be our greatest challenge, making sure that we not only follow iambic pentameter, but also the normal stress of the word. And then content and structure, primarily making sure we include a, a lot of good examples of figurative language, and we include a volta or a turn or a twist beginning in the third quatrain. All right, so we're going to continue today working in our wiki, and 
I will open this up to anyone who wants me to take a look at your sonnet. While we're waiting, I know Elizabeth. Um, I took a look at your uh, your sonnet, and it's really coming together nicely. You've got a title, which I'm. I would remind everyone to try to have titles for all of your four, your four poems for tomorrow's poetry reading. Um, really good examples of iambic pentameter, figurative language. It has really good meaning throughout. Uh, the only thing that I wanted to ask you about, Elizabeth, is this one line here. And um, I don't know if, you know, what your thoughts are about this one line. But for me, when I was reading through here, this one line stuck out or stuck out. And I, I'm not sure if you have some ideas here about this line that might help clarify you mean what it means? Yeah, what it means. And so I see here, I'm, yeah, I guess what it means within the context of the poem here, like um, within the context of this quatrain. Mm. It's basic, probably it's basically just like, well, that line would be like, not having the liberty to do what one do, want, what I want. All right, so. So the, it's like a bird without wings. All right, I miss when I when I read I miss the wings you cut. It's like me extraño, no? Like I'm missing something, mm -hmm. and I miss the wings you that you cut so you're missing the you're missing so what are you missing if you could finish that sentence in this case i i don't understand yeah so for me i'm not really sure i understand what me like when what you mean by cutting wings when somebody when somebody cuts your wings what does, does that mean, what does that mean? For me, it means that they, well, in this context, that they take away from you your liberty. Okay. And then you start the line by saying, I miss that. Like, so what you're saying, and I just want to make sure I understand. You're saying, I miss those times where you restricted my freedom. No. No. Uh... I mean, it's like saying I had wings, but I missed them. Oh. Because you cut them. Okay, so I missed the wings you cut. I see. All right, so I missed. All right, and. I, and then I, comma, flightless bird. Um, I think the only thing, I see now what you mean here. I missed the wings you cut. Um, the I here, I'm, I'm wondering if you need to say I here. Like if you just say a flightless bird instead of I, comma, flightless bird. Because so, if you say it like this, you need the articles, my point, with bird. Like you kind of need an article, I, flightless bird. You could say I, a flightless bird, but then that would add a syllable. But if you just remove I because you've already used I in the line, then you could just say a flightless bird. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that would be my only suggestion there is 
is uh, the I, removing the I. Could I, could I put like O, I mean like O, O, H, like an onomatopoeia? Mm, the, the problem I'm having here is that there's no article for bird. And articles are kind of funny with, you know, we can, we can take some, we can modify slightly certain grammatical aspects and we can rearrange word order sometimes, but uh, it's hard to, when we need a, an article, like we would need an article for, for bird usually, right? So if you just say a flightless bird, you know, I is implied, so you're not losing anything. If you just say, I miss the wings you cut, comma, a flightless bird. Okay. You know what I mean? Yes. Thank but you. But everything else looks, um, looks good. Okay, thank you. I'll okay. change that. All right, you're welcome. All right, anybody else want me to take a look at your sonnet? Yes. Please, my teacher. I'm sorry, who, who is this? Lisette. Lisette, okay. Okay, so uh, let's set the third line. I would take a look at your grammar. You have you are always try. So you might want to say you always try. Because if you say you are always, you would have to use, that's the present continuous. You would have to say you are always trying with that ing, trying. But you could say, you, uh, you always try to make me feel all right, right? So I would say you could say you instead of your, just to keep it grammatically uh, correct. Okay. Okay, so the second quadrain, uh, did we look at this? Did I comment on this? Yeah, did you, you always, all right, so here's the thing, like when, when you, it looks like you added your from you, correct? Your, say no? Yes. Okay, so the thing with your, your still has one syllable. So you're still in the same situation as you were before. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so here, you, this is your iambic pentameter. For all ways so weak and strong soft and hard That's your iambic pentameter so oops not you yeah your okay so the problem here is you're always always is okay you're always all always has two syllables so that means you're going to stress so and 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 then that's that's the problem, right? Because we you want to you want to stress weak and strong. Mm. You see what I mean, or or no? Yes, it is. Okay, I'm all right. So here the next line. And this is what I would recommend, even if it looks funny here, especially when you guys are drafting your sonnets, is to, if it helps to write out the, the stresses in this way, I'm not a kind white dove, nor 
gen equal to, okay? So I'm a contaminator that looks fine. Um, you know, notice that you're not stressing white, but dove is okay. So uh, not is not the greatest, but a kind white dove, I'm not a kind white dove, nor gentle to. Okay, but that's fine. All right, so the next line. I know your whole life has been scared and scarred. Okay, and thanks because this friendship is so true. Okay. All right. Well, we, that's good. And let's look at the third. Are you, let's see. We're mortal, so regardless for the age, I love you even. If you make me mad, despite the fights, the scolding, and the rage, although sometimes you do things to be bad, okay? You've been with me through the good and bad times. To help each other, to... Okay. All right, so... Uh, you, I think you're really close, Lisette. The I'm just going to make a few more observations here about your couplet. And let's let me show you the stresses here. So we've got you've you've been with me through the. Good and bad times. All right, so I think overall you're hitting many of the stress words, but I think there's some cases where you're stressing, for example, the and and, where per perhaps you want to stress instead good and bad. Or I know you're trying to end with times, but... Yeah, you, the the because you're focusing on the and and it. I would take I would take another look at this whole line, right? Um, I'm looking for for good content words, you know, really good content words. And usually, the verb to be like and been and. You know, even me is, is I would consider not as quite as strong as more descriptive words like describe more, right? Show more instead of tell. Try to show through. Think of maybe um, you know some of the five senses. Think about what something tastes like, smells like, not just what it looks like. What does it sound like? And maybe you can express one of the five senses in this line and try to squeeze in a few more content words that are more a little bit more descriptive in nature. Okay, so that would be my suggestion for this, this line here. To help each other to hide all our crimes. It's, it's not bad. I mean, you've got the iambic pentameter, but to help each other, like the words here to help each other to to help each other to hide all our crimes all right so help is good you're stressing that other maybe right uh, but now you're stressing two and all and we're like it would be good to stress hide, right? So maybe there's a way to rearrange range this. And one of the techniques you can use, okay? So as I'm looking at your overall poem, um, and this is one of the hard things in poems, but you have some flexibility in in how you structure some of the words. For example, you don't necessarily always have to start with a subject at the beginning. And you don't always, like this one, and thanks because, right, right. so you don't do it there. But many of the lines, you'll notice that you have 
uh, kind of uh, subjects at the beginning where sometimes you don't you don't need to you don't need to repeat the the subject and so you know like if you take this line here maybe focus on the good you know focus on you finding ways to use both the word good and bad and then other words that complement a little bit more about what the you know what the message is that you want to try to articulate and then the the last line to help each other hi to help each other so yeah i would i would take another look at the last two lines i think the rest of them are uh are good right i like what you have here um all right so does that does that make sense uh lisa okay teacher okay Anybody else? Anybody that I have not looked at your sonnet? I really want to give a preference to those who have not yet received feedback from me for your sonnet. So, Paulina, I don't know if you have anything you want me to look at, Chris, Gloria. Uh, Vanessa, I'm not sure if we looked at anything. I'm not sure. Anybody want me to look at your sonnet? Yes, teacher. I would like you to check mine, please. I'm okay. Right. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, again, I'm going to focus mainly on iambic pentameter. This is the greatest uh, challenge that we have when writing a sonnet. This is the hard, I think, the hardest part. Uh, how to find, you know, follow iambic pentameter and also get the strong words and 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 respect the normal stress of each word. So let's do our stress. So we have mom, you, two, me. Uh, but all right so let's take a look at this first example mom you are to me nothing but beauty so you have 10 syllables okay so you do have 10 syllables remember iambic pentameter follows a weak strong pattern and we basically have five of those weak strong patterns da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. now if i'm forcing myself the to respect iambic pentameter it's going to sound something like mom you are to me nothing but beauty now if this helps for you to do what i'm doing here and capitalize the stress and put in lowercase what's not stressed, you might find it easier to see where, where the, the stresses are occurring in each of the words. Now, in my opinion, mom is a content word that's stronger than you, right? So we're, we're not stressing mom, but we're stressing you. We're stressing to, which is a preposition, that's a function word. So I would recommend that you try not to stress function words like articles, like the, a, and, and prepositions. Now, nothing fits in this line, nothing. Two syllables, weak, strong, that's fine. But, the word but, probably not the best word to stress. And then beauty, how many syllables in beauty? Beauty. Beauty. How many syllables? Two. Marlena? Sorry? Two. Two. Weak strong or strong weak? Beauty. 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 
beauty. Is that strong weak or weak strong? Am I stressing the first syllable or the second syllable? Beauty. Can you can you hear the stress? Beauty. Can you hear the stress, Paulina? Uh, yeah, but I can't quite like uh, identify it. All right. If you guys are not sure, I think it's best also if you're not sure about the stress, you can also check uh, uh, an online dictionary. And I like dictionary.com, but anyone will do. Beauty. So we're going to stress the first syllable with beauty. Otherwise, it would sound like if I stress the second syllable, it'd be like this. Beauty. Beauty. Look at that beauty. Look at that beauty. Beauty. So we would say we typically stress the first syllable. Beauty. Beauty. She's a beauty. We're talking about a car. She's a beauty. All right? So when we have two syllables like this, strong, weak, then we can't fit it into iambic pentameter. Okay? So here, that would be another observation here is that uh, the, you're not stressing the normal stress of, of the word here. Okay? For your... Or is most incredibly incredibly so your heart for your heart is the most yeah, I count 11 syllables here. Incredibly is four syllables, I think. Incredibly. Incredibly. Right. right. So again, iambic pentameter. We'll need to take a look at that line. You have always... Treated, treated, treated you like a Q. Okay, so how many syllables do you have in this line? How many do you count? In this line, you have always treated me like a cutie. How many syllables, uh, Paulina, do you have there? I don't know, but I'm guessing that more than 10. All right. Can you can you count them, though? The, the, the important thing here is I want to make sure that you can count the syllables of each of these words. How many syllables in you? How many syllables? 11. Okay. In the, in the line, yes, there's 11. Right? So we need to have 10. So remember, iambic pentameter, and I am simply means two syllables, weak, strong. Da da. That's an I am. Iambic pentameter means that basically you're going to have five I ams. So it's going to be da 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 da. Next line, exactly the same. Da 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 da. You're going to have 14 lines just like that. Each line of a sonnet, each of the 14 lines of a sonnet follows iambic pentameter. Da 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 da. Okay, so this is the this is the trick, right? This is the puzzle, right? How do we fit it in? And showed and showed me how to have a strong mind. Mm, how many syllables do you have there? And showed me how to have a strong mind.
think? How many do you count? And showed me how to have a strong mind. What do you think? How many syllables and showed? Two. Two. I don't. I think it's just one. Showed. Remember, we have some words that end in ed that don't add an additional syllable. Show, showed, and, and this is one of those examples, right? So for regular verbs in English, we have three different ways of pronunciating regular verbs in the past tense. We can add a d with no added syllable. We can add a D with an added syllable, and we can have a T sound. And showed is one of those under the category of just a D sound. Showed, but it doesn't. It would be like showed. You would have to say something like showed to add a separate syllable. But we say showed, and so there's no additional syllable. And showed me how to have a strong mind. So I think you have nine syllables in, in that line. So you might want to take a look there. Now... In this line, my love for you will never, all right, up to never, it's, it's really good. My love for you will never, will never, de now, debilitate. My love for you will never debilitate. How many syllables in debilitate? Debilitate. Debilitate. How many syllables? How many syllables do you have in this line? How many do you have? And my love for you will never debil debilitate. Yeah, I count 11. My love, and I'm using my fingers here. My love for you will never debilitate. I count 11 syllables. Okay, so we'll need to. Um, and, and make sure debilitate, debilitate. If you had to choose one of those four syllables to, to stress, which would it be? The first, second, third, or fourth? Debilitate. The second. I'm sorry? I guess he's stressing the second syllable. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the first things I recommended from the very beginning when you guys are writing your sonnets, when you start to use longer words, especially at the end of a line, if you have a three, even a three or four syllable word, is it makes it way more complicated. Way more complicated. If you looked at the example that I did, that I showed you guys, one of the first days of this unit, or for this uh, uh, sonnet, for this poem, I should say. Um, if you look at my example, I'm using one syllable words for the last line, because I'm trying to keep it easy. Now, you can use two syllable words, right? Many of you are, as long as it's weak, strong. But when you start to get into three and four, four syllable words are, wow, they're difficult. It's, they're difficult to rhyme with. They're difficult to follow iambic pentameter. So, you know, maybe if debilitate works in the middle of the line, maybe. No, but again, you know, I don't want this to be harder than it has to be. There's a lot of things you have to think about when you're putting together a sonnet. And when you use a lot of big words, you know, Four syllable words debilitate. It's it's hard. 
when we have the whole world goes away. So I want you to double check uh, the rest of your poem for iambic pentameter. And uh, if there's a particular line or you know something else you want me to look at between now and your and tomorrow's class, let me know. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Anyone else want me to look at your poem? Teacher, can you check my poem, please? All right. Was there a particular line that we were working on, Omar? Because I think you're pretty close here. Was there one? Yes. The, the third line of the, the first quarting. The third, um, I remember you have told me black coal wasn't that good, so I changed it for garbage, and I don't know if it's good. Okay, I'm sorry, which uh, quadrant? Okay. And the first, the third line. Okay. So as bright as wafting snow, my love indeed, its song converts the air to make you seek the comfort even garbage has to feel. So you're you're um, saying garbage has to feel mm -hmm. like uh, like the comfort even. Go ahead. I, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I was. I wasn't, I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> or what? Do you, what? What is the meaning of this line? Can you uh, ex explain it? Uh, um, yes, that even the things that we think that doesn't matter or that doesn't deserve any, anything, like has the the chance to feel. All right, because the way that you have garbage has to feel, you're saying that the garbage has to feel something. It's like like mandatory for the garbage to feel. I mean, like, is that the way it sounds? For me, it sounds like the comfort. So the song converts me and make you see the comfort, even garbage. You're, I feel like you're trying to compare this feeling of comfortness, feeling comfortable, to even and then even garbage has to feel. I'm not. I'm not sure what that means. Like saying that the garbage has to. So even something bad has to feel. Mm -hmm. Does that relate to be feeling comfortable or the comfort? Uh, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah, it could be that way. But... Yeah. Compassion fully renders people speak. Okay. Hmm. The song converts the air to make you seek. The comfort even... I mean, maybe another... Maybe another word that, that's not synonymous with trash and garbage, right? Another, something else that you can, the, the comfort and then something else feels, uh, and, and think about things that feel, maybe feel nice, feel comfortable. Um, and, and oh, okay. you know what I mean? Something that, you know, maybe it's, you know, in some sort of object, something, when you think of comfort, and feeling of comfort, what do you think about? And maybe you can kind of squeeze that in to this line, and maybe that's that'll you know clarify the meaning. Oh, okay, okay, yes, uh, you're right. I'll look for another word. Okay, and, I think uh, everything else is okay, right? Was there anything else we need no. to look at? No, that was it. Thank you. Okay, all right, you're welcome. Good, uh, good job, Omar. There, you had a good poem there.
Um, anybody else? Um, me to chair, please. All right, Chris. All right, um, looking at your first quad train, I really liked your first two lines, uh, Chris. And I like your third line, you saved my life when the, my observation in the third line, when I was almost drowned, when I was drowned, uh, there's something about the grammar there. I, uh, I mean, I think you can keep drowned if there's a way to get to ground, I uh, drowned rather. I was I was drowned. You could say I was drowning, I, or I drowned. But I don't think we say I was drowned. So for me, the the grammar there doesn't quite fit. And I think again, just try to find a, an alternative way to get to drown from "You saved my life when you saved my life." or at least to, from uh, you saved my life and then try to get to drowned. I'll always do the things I know. Okay. I How many syllables in the fourth line? I'll, all, I'll always do the things I know you enjoy. How many do you count? Um, I count ten, but I don't. I don't know. Right. So I'll I'll always that's three. Do the things I know you enjoy. I count eleven. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a so again, it's a good it's a good line. I think just try to get rid of one comma or uh, one word somewhere and keep the the last word enjoy. Okay, I want to write a hundred songs for you. Okay, I'll let my heart control the words I sing and dance around. Okay, good. I, I like the second quad train, even though you're you're. Uh, Stressing and in that last line, uh, the, the the lines are really good. So that's why I would keep them. Uh, the wind reminds me every day. The men, the wind reminds me every day that day. The wind reminds me every day that day. Da, 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 every day that day it reminds me every day uh, okay every day that day the wind reminds me I don't know I I'm kind of on the fence about saying reminds me every day that day uh, da, 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 because it's almost like saying saying it two different ways Ways, I guess, I guess my reminds me every day that day, because usually every day is like something repetitive every day and then that day. All right, maybe. Uh, my dreams became a list to do with you. Okay, uh, the word that does not fail or feel. Uh, it, it, it is a mistake, it feels, yeah. Okay. The, the world does not feel cruel. Okay, the world does not feel cruel and gray. I, I count eight syllables there, Chris, but I, I do like the line. The world does not feel cruel. All right, so, but I think I, I only count eight. I'm not sure how many you count. It seems to be a better place you drew. Okay, it seems to be a better place you drew. A life without the music of your voice, good, would make me want to leave, would make me want to leave. Again, I count eight in the in the last line. 
Is that what you count? Uh, yeah, they're, they are eight. Yeah, but you're, uh, I really like what you have here, Chris. Uh, just take a look at those lines I mentioned. Make sure you've got eight or uh, ten syllables. Mm -hmm. And um, you do a good job on stressing the content words for the most part. There's a couple of, like, I see your movements and I love your swing. But I like that line, so I would keep it. Um, yeah. But, um, yeah. Okay. Looks good, Chris. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Gloria, you have anything, or Vanessa, have any questions? You want me to look at something? Me, teacher, please. Carol, okay. Yeah. Uh, the whole poem or, or a particular part? You want me to look at a particular section? Caro? <laughs> Sorry, teacher. Uh, I said that you have already checked the first two, so maybe can you check the third? Okay. But sadly, I can't find you near my side, and distance tells me that you are never here. Please tell me you don't have a thing to hide. Your absence speaks a sad sound I can hear. Your absence speaks a sad sound I can hear. Okay, good. And every day and every night I'm fine because you have the shine. You still, you still be mine. Okay, I really like what you have, Caro. The last line, you still, you still be mine. You still, you be mine. You be mine, you still be mine. Mm. I do, 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 do. The, the grammar here, you be mine. The only, the only way that grammatically speaking that would work is if you're saying, hey, you be mine. Like you're, it's an imperative, like you're giving a command. But the way that you have the line written, you might want to throw in a contraction like you'll, like you, apostrophe L L. Like, you will still be but, mine. Will I like. use instead of still, please? You please be mine? Because you have the shine. So so how would it be? Uh, because you have the shine, you, you please be mine? Instead of still? The, the thing, it's the problem with me, I don't have a problem with still. The problem is you saying you be mine. Like, because you have the shine, shine, you you would you would have to say you will be mine, you are mine, uh, you were mine, you could be mine, but I don't think we would say you be mine because we're not conjugating the verb be in that oh. case. Now, if you're going to say for the future, right, you will be mine, right, for example then B is okay, right? Because you're using the auxiliary will, but you could use the contraction you'll, U apostrophe L L, to bring in the auxiliary and not add another syllable. So but I still have like just nine, I think. I'm sorry? But if I add like a contraction of will, you, uh, I will missing one syllable. No, you're not adding a syllable with the contraction. Uh, yeah, but um, if I but if I take a steal away and I put will well in a contraction, I will have like nine syllables, no? Instead of ten. Right, but what I'm saying is don't take out still. Don't change oh, anything. No. <laughs> don't change anything. I the can't. only thing I'm saying is add, you know, don't take out anything. Just yeah. add the contraction you'll. Oh, <laughs> sorry. If that's, what, if that's what you want to say. You're saying you'll in the future, you'll be mine, right? So oh. because you have the shine, you'll still be mine. And that'll be just, that'll, oh, yeah. that'll follow iambic pentameter. Sorry. If that's what you want to say, I don't want to tell you what, what to put in there, but that's what you could put. 
yeah. and not have to change anything else. Yeah. Okay. And also for the title, can we, well, in this case, I want to add a Spanish word. Can I do that or not? Sure. Yes. Oh, okay. Sure. Thank All you. Right. Teacher. You're welcome. Yeah, good job, Carol. All right. I think we're about out of time. Um, Listen, for those who have not received any feedback, I still would like to give you feedback before tomorrow's class, really, especially for the sonnet, right? Just so that you'll feel more comfortable, I think, uh, just for the final poetry reading. Um, so if you're going to send me a message via chat, I would ask that you send it before, I don't know, three, four o'clock, just so that I have some time to get back to you and you have time to make the final changes. All right, the earlier the better, of course, right? So if you can send it before, like in the morning, um, but but if, I, you know, I would probably not send, any, send, send me anything after three just because I don't know how quickly we can turn it around. I can get you the feedback and you can make the final changes, okay? So if you want me to look at something, try to send me an email before this afternoon around three or so, uh, just so that we both have time uh, to to address your sonnet okay so tomorrow guys we're going to have almost the entire online session dedicated to reading all four poems we're going to go in order i'm going to post in microsoft teams uh, the order how each one of you is going to present we'll follow the same order and uh, really make sure that you practice all the poems again obviously the sonnet but the other three as well uh, so that you're comfortable with with uh, reciting it and I think it's always good practice to record yourself and listen back. Try to overemphasize the, um, as you recite it, overemphasize the words. With the sonnet, don't feel like you have to read da dun da dun da dun da dun da dun That's how we're reading it now because we're trying to learn about iambic pentameter. But now that you read, now that you have completed it, you read it with the pauses however you want, with the intonation, right, and, and the pauses. Try to pause between each line, of course, but you can also pause in, in the middle, you know, through, through each line. So use commas to help remind you to insert those pauses as, as you deliver the poem. All right, so again, overemphasize, overemphasize, even if it feels uncomfortable. That's why I suggest that you record yourself because when you go back and listen to yourself, you, you're going to feel one way when you, and you, when you read it. You're going to feel another way <clears throat> when you listen to yourself read it. Okay, really. You'll feel completely different when you listen to yourself and how you read it. And the way, again, that you can make it more expressive, to make any poem more expressive, is your intonations, your highs and your lows, and your pauses. Okay, and also the speed. We don't want to read it too fast. We want to, you know, uh, don't read it too fast. So try to take your time when you read it. And with the sign, at the last thing I'll say, with the sign, and again, if you guys make mistakes, um, you can start again. Now, with the sign it being 14 lines, if you get down to the 13th line, you make a mistake, you don't have to start all over again. You can just start with with the, the couplet in that case, right? Or if you make a mistake in the third quatrain, you can start again with the third quatrain or even start the same line, whichever, it doesn't matter, all right? I can go back and edit as we need to, all right? But, um, but do practice, try to practice as much as you can between now and tomorrow so that you feel comfortable while you give the reading. All right, guys, we'll go ahead and stop there for today. Uh, really good job uh, of the, the ones that I've seen so far. You guys have made some really good progress with your creative writing. And so, so yeah, I want you guys to feel comfortable tomorrow when you're doing your reading. And, and the, the, only, the best way to do it is uh, to practice. All right, guys, we'll stop there for today. Uh, thank you and enjoy the rest of your day. And we'll see you tomorrow at 8 a.m. sharp. Take care, guys. Thank you, teacher. Uh, teacher excuse me. Uh, last question, please. Yes, let's say, go ahead. Uh, for the quiz of figure language, uh, the score is the highest or the last? 
it'll be the highest. And uh, I'm going to go in today and uh, upload the grades or update the grades, I should say. And um, yeah, if you, it'll be the highest of the three quiz, uh, quizzes that you took. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. All right, guys, thanks. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.